That's our theme for today. As we emerge out of winter and head into spring with the wildflowers showing, there is no better time to reflect on the endless, constant change, on bettering ourselves and the world, and the spiritual and inspirational messages that the great celebrations of the spring equinox can deliver to us. So our welcome here is that at SMOOF, we identify, however we identify ourselves, whomever we love, and wherever we are on our spiritual, religious, or personal journey, we are welcome. And we welcome you here in this free and open community of seekers, finders, and doers. Could you hear the chime? Thank you. for the chalice lighting. Let's light this chalice and say this, these words together. We light this chalice as a beacon of hope, a sign of our quest for truth and meaning. Thank you. And now, We are, called, we are called to presence by these words written by Robin Wall Kimmerer. She wrote Braiding Sweetgrass, and I'll have this uh, after the service that, so you can look through it if you want. She's a biologist and an indigenous uh, spiritual person. Our elders say that we live in a time of the seventh fire. We are the ones the ancestors spoke of, the ones who will bend to the task of putting things back together to rekindle the flames of the sacred fire to begin the rebirth of a nation. Please stand if you're able and sing our song for blessing for black flowers that bloom about our feet. Page 76 in the gray hymnal, or you can just fall. And Clint's going to play through it for us once because it's not familiar to a lot of us. Thank you. 
Now we're going to speak the covenant together. Follow the screen. <laughs> Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To treat each other and the earth gently, to celebrate our differences and cherish what we share to work together for justice and the common good, and to keep our minds always open to new possibilities. Thus do we covenant with one another. Passing of peace is a simple way to connect with two or three people around you. The first person, you can shake hands or touch an elbow. Um, the first person calls peace be with you. And the second person replies also with you. So please connect with a few people who are around you now. Peace be with you. Thank you. So now we're going to do the call for offering, but we've already gotten one offering right here. Willow, Willow, would you raise your hand? Where are you, Willow? There you are. Willow's got some trees, free trees. So anybody who wants a free tree, talk to Willow. This is the time that we give in support of our values, mission, and vision. There is guidance on the screen coming soon for electronic giving. There it is. You can bring the offerings here to this table during the offertory music or give at the uh, welcome station after worship. This month, our Donate the Plate recipient is the International Convocation of UU Women, a nonprofit organization in special consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council, focusing on global women's rights and empowerment, doing many projects, including microloans and leadership training. In 2019, they were granted that special consultative status with the UN Economic and Social Council, the highest status bestowed upon non-governmental organizations by the United Nations. If you want to give directly to the International Women's Convocation, please put your donation in an envelope, and I'll have an envelope there for you. Um, or if you're writing a check, write IWC or, or uh, on it to clarify that it's for the International Women's Convocation. And you can visit uh, smooth.org for online giving. And now we're going to do the offertory music while you can uh, come to the front if you have an offering.
Thank you, Clint. That's beautiful. Now is the time for all ages. And what we do is we, we usually have children, but we're all really children at heart. So would you come, Diana uh, Piñales, and tell a story to us grown-up kids? Okay, we're going to skip the story, Dern. So bring your children so we can hear the story. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna okay we're gonna we'll do the we'll do the same story next time you don't have to worry you're not missing anything we'll we'll work on it for next time thank you Now it's the time for joys and concerns. If you're here in person, you can come up one at a time, drop a pebble and share. And if you're here online in the church without walls, please add your joys and concerns in the chat and we will read them here. After this sharing, we will join back together for a time of prayer and meditation. So I'm Ross Jones, and I'm sure a number of you have heard about my wife passing this uh, past Tuesday. Uh, she had a very rare form of Alzheimer's called PCA that tends to attack women of a younger age. She was about 51 when they diagnosed her. Uh, so it's been uh, 11, 12 years we've dealt with this. Uh, it was, on one hand, a very sad day but on the other, it was a great relief. Uh, she had been under hospice care and, and really was very comfortable and, and, and pe died peacefully. Uh, and so my life is making a big change right now from being a caregiver and overseeing her, her care to uh, whatever life is going to bring me. But uh, so... Uh, I, I've been dealing with uh, uh, groups, that, uh, a particular group that works with her, and uh, she not only went through a research program for uh, Alzheimer's uh, new drug, uh, but she donated her brain to the uh, UT group in San Antonio that has specialized research in Alzheimer's and accepts brain donations. So she feel very good about that. Thank you. It's a joy, unexpected. Muchas gracias a la linda de invitarme a comer el almuerzo con, contigo y los otros to speak some Spanish for a whole hour. It's something about another language. It's like a window opens up in your brain. Entonces, gracias. Y todos que hablan español más o menos, Yo, menos yo, pueden asistir, pueden asistir también. Thank you. Um, I have a concern and uh, my 
fact that I have needed to uh, bring this shirt, unfortunately, out of retirement uh, speaks to that concern. Um, the fact that one of our presidential candidates is literally dehumanizing immigrants to this country, uh, literally calling them animals, uh, is something that all of us in this country must be concerned about, and all of us in Texas especially. joy for the thunder we're hearing and the steady rain that was falling when we left home this morning and I wish it would go on all day and the map I saw last night that put San Marcos not in the exceptional not in the severe but only in the moderate drought area, which is one heck of an improvement over a year ago. And let's hope it continues. I'll tip you to. All right, Susan, big crowd today. Um, my concern is I have friends my age who are falling, and I don't know if it's spring and it's rainy and it's slippery. I have a friend in Kyle in rehab who's going to be there quite some time, and then she'll have more weeks somewhere else in rehab. So I'm taking care of her, her mail and her house but she's I've known her 30 years we're very good friends so I'm trying to look out for her but falling is never fun at any age great on zoom we have Taylor Tibby a sorrow for Palestinians who are blocked from praying on Ramadan in East Jerusalem and a sorrow for the Israel attack on the aid distribution center, which killed five people. We have another one from Luce, um, from Nina Stein, um, a concern for her dog, Lexi, who is so afraid of thunder. And one. And I'm adding one more for all those joys and concerns that remain unspoken. Sorry, I got lost. Pablo Lasquez is now going to lead us in a meditation. Let me introduce him. He's a scholar, theologian, lecturer, aspiring UU minister, currently finishing their Master's in Divinity at Star King, a resident of Texas for almost 20 years now. Pablo enjoys movies, barbecue, travel, and preaching and is happy to join the San Marcos UU Fellowship to celebrate the spring equinox, one of Pablo's favorite holidays. Welcome, Pablo Vasquez. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Um, about 20 years ago, if I was in San Marcos, I would have been waking up with a hangover. So it is nice to not be doing that and instead to be joining you all today and providing instead a very calming meditation. So now 
if you can uh, get yourself in whatever seating pose you need in order to relax your body. Breathe in with me. Breathe out. And let's begin our meditation. Over our heads, the great wheel of stars shifts. The, the spring equinox manifests itself. And for one precious instant, darkness and light exist in balanced proportion to one another. Within our very minds, the great web of neurons shifts. New consciousness arises. And for one precious instant, experience and meaning exist together as revelation and epiphany. Within our hearts, the great rhythm of our lives shifts a new way of being, reveals itself. And for one precious instant, the nexus of the body and the seat of the soul truly exist as one. Let us give thanks internally to for those times in our lives when all seems in balance. For those times are rare and precious. The equinox, as all do, shall pass. Their revelation may be forgotten. And our actions will not always reflect our truest and best selves. But through our gratitude, we may remember who we are, reflect on who we may become, and restore the balance which brings equanimity to our lives. Now let us be quiet for a moment together. Thank you. And I'd just like to remind you that all three of those parts go together. So as we go through them, if you find one you like, you can stay on it or you can follow through the verses with me. <laughs> And now I invite Pablo Vasquez up again for a sermon. So the theme of this sermon today is on new life and new spirit as a message for the spring equinox. Um, in today's society, we seem to be always knocked out of understanding the seasons, understanding sort of our internal or even earthly calendar of sorts, our cosmic calendar. Uh, 
and in such a way, it, when I was asked to come here, I thought about what I could speak about. And it's just a, I think what we need is not just a reminder of what this time is about, but also, especially in these times which seek to divide us, tear us apart, alienate us from each other, to see how the rest of us celebrate all around the world and what sort of messages they bring to us on this day. And I think with the spring equinox coming in particular, you'll see messages that resonate almost in a sort of universality that exists unspoken amongst us as conscious beings. I think uh, we can all learn from them and take these messages, not just from within us and these walls, but also out there into the world, into our lives. So why does the spring equinox matter? Well, besides it being one of my favorite uh, celebrations on the calendar, I tend to really find a sort of refreshment in the spring equinox. I love winter, it's my favorite season. There is something so beautiful about seeing new life bloom, new life develop, uh, a new opportunity, really. And too often we are stuck, especially in today's modern society, with conceptions that no one can change. Nothing can change. We're stuck in this. This is our fault, our failures, and we must sort of just uh, boil in it, so to speak. But the reality is that the lessons of the spring equinox teach us is that we can change. We can change not just ourselves, but our world around us. And uh, I think together, if we internalize that message, we can definitely uh, see a better world, not just for ourselves, for our children, their children, and so forth. So let me introduce you to some great spring equinox celebrations and what they consider core to their celebrations. You'll see a lot of commonalities, as I said, and I think that's important also to keep in mind. To start, one of the largest spring equinox celebrations in the world is called Noruz. It is uh, originally a Zoroastrian holiday, an ancient uh, religion uh, formed sort of in the Iranic steppes of Central Asia. Uh, but it's also celebrated by Shia Muslims, by Baha'is, uh, and different Iranic cultures, no matter what their religions are. Even some Armenian Christians in Iran celebrate it as well, and so forth. Uh, what Nauru sort of symbolizes is this idea of the new sun coming. Nauru literally means new day. And so what uh, people who celebrate Nauru then try to celebrate is the coming of a new life, a new day, a new reality. Um, as such, they tend to practice things like cleaning their houses, uh, putting together new clothes, and spending time with community, renewing their sort of, uh, you know, friendships, loves, romances, uh, contracts, agreements, and so forth. Uh, they throw great parties and great feasts, as any holiday should. And uh, they tend to set up a, uh, a little table altar uh, called the Hafsim, which has seven things on it that all represent seven aspects of the, you, the world that we live in. Uh, you know, represent the earth, the water, the fire, and so forth. Uh, there's usually books of wisdom and poetry, whether that's the Gathas of Zarathustra or the poetry of Hafez or Rumi. Uh, and they're read back and forth to each other uh, to sort of not just remind themselves of these words, but also to stimulate the mind because it's a renewal of our thought processes as well. Um, but also what I find fascinating is amongst the Kurdish people, uh, Nowruz is celebrated as a day of freedom, of liberation of, and particularly of the liberation of women. Um, one of the great legends that they share there is the legend of Kaveh the blacksmith in ancient times, uh, overthrowing the great tyrant Zahak, uh, just with uh, people power and uh, the desire for change. And so those messages are all intertwined in Kurdish culture for the spring equinox, that not just should we be renewing ourselves, but our societies, and we should always keep an eye towards tyrants. 
And there is also Sham and Asim. It's very fascinating. Sham and Asim is celebrated only in Egypt. It's an old Kemetic holiday, uh, meaning that it was uh, celebrated as part of the religious calendar of the ancient Egyptians. Um, it's based on the ancient Shemu festival, uh, which basically revolved around the tides of the Nile. And in an interesting echo of what we just heard, uh, it was viewed as a victory against the tyranny of the Nile, which sometimes would flood them. Um, and as such, uh, the, the Shem and Asim is kept alive by the Coptic Christian community, which are direct descendants of the old ancient Egyptians. And what they do is, uh, it's usually the Monday after Easter, uh, they celebrate with lettuce and eggs that are said to represent birth and renewal, respectively. Uh, there's great feasting again. Uh, and here's an interesting little parallel. They color boiled eggs, just like we do at Easter sometimes. And uh, they eat them. But particularly one of the traditions that they carry on from ancient Egypt is they take boats or wander off towards the Nile or just into the middle of nature. And they breathe in the air deeply so that they can breathe in the new air and thus have new life that will take them forward for the rest of the year. And of course, there's Easter for those on the Gregorian calendar, uh, whether one celebrates it as a Christian or in a more secular sort of way. Uh, the very messages of it are life and rebirth uh, and uh, revolving around this sort of uh, Christian conception of the light of the world. So we see light coming into uh, this thought process again and the inner fire of the spirit of the heart. Uh, of course, feasting, sometimes the coloring of eggs, and of course, new beginnings. But in particular, here goes again, um, there's an element of still a fight against oppression, but a metaphysical one. Uh, Jesus goes through the harrowing of hell right before Easter, in which he goes down into hell and destroys it, and thus destroys the tyranny of hell. Uh, and that's an important message, particularly for Unitarian Universalists, as our ancestors, the Universalists, uh, they based this idea of universality and universalism around Jesus destroying the uh, hell itself. So it, it's interesting that that's also brought up every Easter as well. And also the destruction of death's kingdom, the very use of the term of a kingdom being shattered, a sort of liberation from a tyrant as well. There's a uh, Shunbun no Hi, uh, which is the vernal equinox day in Japan. I was actually just in Japan, uh, arrived on Friday. Uh, so excuse my eyes, they look a little bit tired. Um, and it, the Shunbun no Hi is celebrated in the Shinto tradition in Japan, but mostly is celebrated by most Japanese people, no matter what their religion is. Uh, they visit graves to pay homage to their ancestors because they view that this is a rebirth for them as well. They're able to come back and communicate and be honored once more, almost as if a Day of the Dead scenario in some ways. Um, there's a lot of cleaning the houses, committing to making life changes. They'll make your life, and not just your life, but your neighbor's lives better, which is particularly important in this because one's ancestors are viewed not just as one's lineal blood ancestors, but also those around you. So your neighbor's grandparents are as much your ancestors as your grandparents are. And as such, uh, also uh, farmers pray for good luck and fortune and great crops uh, on the spring equinox uh, as they begin to bring forth new life that will feed us and thus allow our lives also to continue. Uh, it's called Higan in Japanese Buddhism and uh, the Japanese Buddhists at this time <laughs> reflect on their lives and change them however they can to further reach enlightenment and destroy the oppressions that keep them away from enlightenment. Ostara amongst uh, modern paganism. Um, you know, there's a huge pagan community within our own Unitarian Universalism that's sometimes forgotten, not spoken of, not celebrated as much as they should be. Um, 
in Ostara, you know, we there's concepts of light and dark that happen to be in balance at this point at any equinox. Uh, of course, a call for new beginnings, the understanding of new life born from the cold, from the, you know, the dry ground. I myself have seen flowers blooming already, which is so lovely to see. And of course, uh, light embracing us all and a communing with the earth, <laughs> recognizing the oneness that we have to the natural world, which I think is important, especially in these times of climate change and uh, the degradation that that we continue to do to our mother nature. And speaking of mothers, in the Arab world, uh, today is mothers, uh, well, the spring equinox is Mother's Day. Uh, this was founded, interestingly enough, by uh, Mustafa Amin in Egypt, who was a sort of revolutionary journalist uh, who was arrested. And uh, upon hearing the story of a mother whose son goes away and achieves a great life and forgets about his mother. He decided uh, that enough was enough. Uh, he needed to show gratitude to what he labeled to be the ultimate nourishers of new life, which are mothers. And in order to celebrate the mother, he believed that they should be honored on the day in which we honor newness, renewal, new life. And that would be the spring equinox. The government, of course, tried to stop this holiday, uh, especially at a time when empowering women was not particularly as popular in Egypt. Um, but nonetheless, uh, because they arrested him and thus increased his fame, uh, it is now celebrated almost universally in the Arab world as Mother's Day uh, to show once again how a desire to honor life and life givers has, uh, was born out of a, also a fight against oppression. And you see these themes now that you've heard all these different holidays and how they seem to be universal. In some cases, these ancient cultures did not communicate with one another and thus develop these at some grand conference of the spring equinox. This is, these are values that we've held dear uh, that haven't been muddled by you know the sands of history uh, that not only do we find around this time ourselves admiring the beautiful blooms, uh, the new life, the new relationships, the new friendships that come into our lives, uh, children or even acknowledging death and seeing that as a renewal as well, but also a recommitment to ourselves and to our world and to our communities where we're not just stuck in our stagnant ways and letting time and history pass us by, but we're also out there as our own Unitarian Universalism calls us to, to bear prophetic witness to the oppressions, the malice, the tyranny, the greed that seeks to keep us stagnant, that seeks to hold us back continuously as a people and uh, to continue to fight on and uh, in the cases of like Cave, uh, the blacksmith to fight against that and overthrow that and just work to create a better world. And with these lessons in mind, it's important to reflect on what you will be doing for the spring equinox as well. How will you be celebrating? What will you be meditating on? Or better yet, what actions, what words, what thoughts will you be able to give from yourself to renew our world? Thank you very much. And it was a pleasure to join you here today. Oh, okay, please stand if you're able, and we'll sing All Beautiful, The March of Days. If you have a hymnal, it's on page 57, and if not, or even if you do, the words are still up there. <laughs> Beautiful the march of days as seasons come and go. The hand that shaped the roads have brought the crystal of the snow. Has sent the holy frost of heaven, the flowing water seal. Laid a silent loveliness 
grass on a hill and blood and field or white expanses sparkling clear the radiant morns unfold the solemn splendors of the night burn brighter through the cold life mounts in every throbbing vein love deepens round the heart and clearer sounds the angel hymn good will to Well, and now we're going to extinguish the chalice. Let's say these words together. We extinguish the chalice here that it might glow gently in our hearts. May it light our path as we leave this place. May it guide our way until we are together again. And um, Pablo Vasquez is now going to give us a ben benediction. In this time of anticipated spring, let us allow ourselves to extend the anticipation, to value the time of budding before blooming, of seeding before sprouting. This is a time of revelation, of revealing of that which is eternal, which we see every year, but still need to be reminded to see it in a new way. This is also the revelation of that which is new. Every spring we encounter something never before seen. It is that very newness which embodies hope and potential for the wholeness which is yet to be. Thus, I send you out. With this blessing and benediction, let us allow spring to unfold slowly that we may appreciate the true mystery of rebirth and renewal. Have a lovely Sunday. And we'll close with our song that's a chance to connect with each other one more time. Carry it home. children carry it out in the street carry it on to the ones you love and on to the ones you need carry it light with your shoulders carry it deep in your soul for you bless with magic and the magic will make Thank you to everyone.
fingers fall off. Yes. <laughs> Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. I personally thank you for letting me count beautifully. Uh, redirected us. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very well. And she's really good at that. Is that because she's I a teacher? Said, <laughs> I got the last one. 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 I got the last one